Um, as uh, Ruchika just uh, explained, uh, today is the what we call the Constitution Day of India, the 26th of November. Uh, it's the day that uh, the Constituent Assembly uh, completed its work, uh, finalized the Constitution, and adopted it. And subsequently, of course, as you know, uh, it came into force two months later, so which is 26th of January, our Republic Day, a National Day uh, of India, uh, a national day which is common with Australia's national day as well. Um, uh, but today is particularly uh, uh, poignant because after, after many years of uh, very hard work, lots of debates, lots of drafting, lots of discussions, we finally uh, uh, adopted uh, the constitution, finished our work, the constituent assembly. Uh, uh, I will read the preamble out uh, for um, all of you. The preamble of the Indian Constitution uh, is a very, very short document. Uh, the, the Constitution, when you open it, opens with the preamble, starts with the preamble. And the preamble really um, encapsulates uh, very pithily uh, what the idea of India is how India would be governed, and what are the uh, principles on which uh, uh, life in India would be based. And uh, it is an extremely, as I said, important document. Uh, it has stood us in good stead. Um, uh, we, 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 we remain an uninterrupted republic uh, till date. We've just uh, completed 75 years of independence. Uh, and uh, we also continue to enjoy a very robust, even if sometimes noisy, uh, democracy and all the civil liberties that our constitution guarantees us. All of which, the idea of all of which is encapsulated, as I said, in this very brief but very pithy uh, document called the preamble to the constitution. Uh, so I'll uh, read it out for all of you. Uh, it begins. We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic, and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status, and of opportunity, and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this Constitution. Uh, thank you. That's the, the preamble, uh, which, as I said, uh, encapsulates the idea of India, the structure of India, and how uh, its citizens will be governed and uh, the rights that they will enjoy. Uh, thank you for that opportunity, uh, Ruchika, uh, uh, for me to read the preamble. Uh, I hope that all the participants and everyone else in the larger community uh, will also not just uh, pay attention to the preamble, remind themselves of the preamble, but perhaps even encourage uh, the next generation, uh, the younger children, uh, to read it as it, it's very short, it's very easy, uh, but it's uh, important to to see uh, how the idea of India is captured in this. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir, for reading the preamble to the Constitution that embodies the soul and the spirit to the uh, uh, the river document, the Constitution. I would now request our esteemed guest today, Honorable Lisa Singh. Uh, uh, who requires no introduction in the forum. However, I would take deep pride in reading out a brief introduction for Ma'am. Honorable Lisa Singh is a former Australian senator and was the first woman of South Asian heritage to be elected to the Australian Parliament. Prior to the Senate, she was a Tasmanian state member of Parliament and a minister in the Tasmanian government. She is currently the CEO of the Australian India Institute, a leading research and policy think tank advancing Australia-India relations at the government, business, diaspora, and academic levels. 
She is also deputy chair of the Australian government's Australia India Council and sits on the advisory board of the University of Melbourne, Asia Link. I now request you, ma'am, to kindly give your talk on the strengths of the Indian Constitution. Well, namaste, everyone, and thank you so much, Rachika, for that warm introduction. I'm very honoured uh, to be invited to be part of today's significant occasion of celebrating India's constitution on India's Constitution Day, and also to talk with you today about some of the strengths of India's constitution. Can I start by acknowledging that I come to you uh, today on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation here in Melbourne and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging as the First Nations people uh, of our land that we meet on here. And also just to acknowledge and, and thank His Excellency High Commissioner, uh, His Excellency Manpreet Vora for reading out uh, the preamble um, and, you know, sharing with us the significance of the soul and spirit of the Constitution from that preamble, those short words that mean so much. Also, to so many that are joined today, uh, uh, members of the Indian diaspora from all over Australia, uh, academia, uh, consulates, uh, uh, all Australians that are, that are part of uh, wanting to be part of celebrating India's Constitution Day. And also just to thank uh, you know, all the organisers there at the uh, India, India's High Commission for, for organising this special event. I think it is really significant and important uh, and, and provides that opportunity for India's thriving, uh, Indian diaspora, uh, that, which is thriving here in Australia, to um, be part of recognising uh, their, their democratic roots uh, in terms of India's constitution and, and share that journey uh, by celebrating this day. I think it's also important that we mark this day in Australia because, you know, we, we do have now the fastest growing diaspora in Australia being our Indian diaspora. Uh, and just as we have been celebrating India's 50, 70, 50, 75 years of independence this year, uh, part of that is also recognising uh, India's constitution celebrating its strengths and how it's contributed to celebrating uh, the strength of the Australia-India relationship in that sense. So because you've got with that two vibrant democracies that are underpinned by the values that democracy brings. And one of those, of course, is our constitutions, uh, the rule of law, the separation of powers, freedom of expression and the right to vote. And in fact, here in, in Victoria, where I'm speaking to you from today, uh, it is actually election day and many Victorians will be out exercising their right to vote. And some of them may be Indian migrants that have settled here in Victoria and become citizens and may be voting for the first time. And I think with that, they bring with them to Australia their deep understanding of democracy, of India's democracy, coming from the largest democratic country in the world. And we in Australia are so much, so much more the richer for that. So India's constitution adopted by the Constituent Assembly in India of India on November the 26th, this day, 1949, and enforced on January the 26th, 1950, which obviously we will mark soon as Republic Day and Australia Day combined. And this year marks the, the 72nd year of the existence of the constitution of the world's largest democracy. But it was only seven years back that the Honourable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, while laying the foundation stone of the Ambedkar Memorial in Mumbai in 2015, declared that the 26th of November every year would be celebrated as the Constitution Day of India, marking one of the most important days of, in the history of modern India. As His Excellency has just read out for us all, the preamble of the Constitution of India broadly captures the philosophy and the objectives of the Indian Constitution. It asserts India to be a sovereign, secular, democratic, republic state committed to secure justice, liberty and equality for the people and for promoting fraternity, dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. 
Borrowing provisions from multiple sources, including from uh, the Government of India Act 1935 and constitutions of various countries like the United Kingdom, the United States and Australia, among others, it is the lengthiest written constitution in the world. And in the words of Dr Ambedkar, who was the chairman of the drafting committee of the Indian constitution, the constitution of India was framed after as, and I quote, ransacking all of the known constitutions of the world. I think that um, that expression is quite, is quite special. Uh, the fact that uh, India has co perhaps come to independence at a later stage, but in doing so benefits from having, I think, a very solid constitution, having ransacked all the known constitutions of the world. A comprehensive and detailed document, the Constitution of India was drafted, keeping in mind India's history, the vastness of its geography and its diversity. <coughs> India's struggle for independence played a vital role in heightening the political understanding, social consciousness and awareness of the people of India, who after years of colonial subjugation understood the significance and value of democracy, equality and civil rights. So I want to share with you today those strengths of democracy, fundamental rights and inclusion and secularism that underpins this important document, India's constitution. Democracy, to start with, Therefore, at a time of drafting the constitution, the framers gave complete power to the people of India. A democratic government that allowed for universal adult franchise. Every individual in India after 18 years and above could vote and appoint their own government for a country and its people who had been under colonial rule for almost a century the significance of this is monumental. On fundamental rights, empowering people further, the Constitution of India gives guarantee of fundamental rights for, to all its people without discrimination on the basis of caste, class, religion, gender, etc. These rights are enforceable by an independent judiciary with certain restrictions and cannot be amended or violated by any oppressive government or person. Fundamental rights have been crucial for the overall development of the people of India and play a vital role in India's thriving democracy. Of course, these include the right to equality, Article 14 to 18, the right to freedom, Article 19 to 22, the right against exploitation, Article 23 and 24, the right to freedom of religion, Article 25 to 28. Cultural and educational right, Article 29 and 30. And the right to constitutional remedy. remedy. India's constitution is also culturally diverse. It's India itself, of course, its cultural diversity is magnetic and makes it extremely appealing to the rest of the world. But the framers of India's con of constitution understood the importance of India's diversity and the need for it to be preserved in the constitution. One of the many virtues of the Indian constitution, one of the most significant is the fact that it is inclusive and secular. The constitution of India ensures freedom of religion to all, which means that every person is free to practice the religion of their choice. Similarly, the constitution has played a vital role in preserving the linguistic diversity of India and has recognised 22 official languages and guarantees rights to mother tongue education. The Constitution of India also has served provisions that prevent discrimination based on gender and ensure equality in all spheres, including equal means for livelihood and right to equal pay. Additionally, Constitution provides the state with the power to make special provisions for women and children 
and grants various cultural rights to minorities. For a multicultural, multilingual and multi-religious country like India, respecting diversity and including people from all spheres is crucial to its growth and development. And the Constitution of India over the years has ensured that rights and freedoms of all Indians are preserved and protected. I want to share with you uh, that in preparing this talk with you today, I reached out to Indians to ask them, some of my Indian friends, but also uh, colleagues and uh, part of those in my team, to ask them what the strengths and meaning of the constitution was for them. So I asked uh, one, one of my interns, in fact, Tushar, to share with me what, what he felt were the strengths of India's constitution. And now that he is a student here in Australia, uh, how he carries that with him here and, and what this special day means for him. And I want to share with you what he said with me. He said, uh, in my opinion, the biggest strength of India's constitution is its inclusivity, namely the drafting of the Indian constitution with the consideration of features included the constitutions of other countries, such as Britain and the US, as we've mentioned, France, Australia, and so on. The features from the Australian constitution, the concept of concurrent list, Article 108, the joint sitting of the two houses, and freedom of trade and commerce. So it's interesting how uh, everyone takes something out of India's constitution and actually finds threads that give it meaning to them. And I think this is because the Indian constitution is a living document. In the beginning of my talk today, I noted that it has been 72 years since the constitution of India came into force. And one of the greatest strengths of the Indian constitution has been its ability to adapt to changing times. In the words of Dr. Ambedkar, constitution is not a mere lawyer's document. It is a vehicle of life and its spirit is always the spirit of age. I think this is where you know, the Constitution of India is often referred to as a living document, which means that it is dynamic and can be amended with the needs of emerging times for the betterment of India and its people. And that indeed is not only a, a, a living document, it is a healthy document. Those who framed the constitution were aware that they needed to develop a constitution that could survive evolving times and adapt to changes in society and the world. However, at the same time, ensure that certain fundamental aspects, which are key to India's core values, principles and ethos remain intact. The India's, Indian constitution is neither too rigid nor too flexible and it has amendments provisions. It has been amended some 105 times since it first came into force on January the 26th, 1950. Now in 1947, those 75 years that we have been celebrating this year of India's independence, when India became an independent nation, there were many in the West, we recall in the history books, who doubted India's future, who claimed that India could never become a democracy and would perhaps disintegrate into smaller states. We look at India today, some 75 years later, celebrating as we are this year, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. India is seen by the world as a force to be reckoned with. The fastest growing economy uh, set to, to, just recently obviously overtaken Britain and as well uh, as, as a much larger economy. That in itself in this 75 years is significant. Uh, has so much as, as a nation, as a people, as, as Indian diaspora here in Australia, so much to be proud of. So here in Australia and across the world, we do acknowledge very much India's democratic success on this day and every day. And we recognise India's global leadership, particularly as we move into India taking over the presidency of the G20. I think there is no denial that India's constitution has a significant role to play in this. And to quote Prime Minister Modi, 
He said, India's constitution is not merely a book, but is an idea and commitment and also a tribute to the nation's confidence in its independence. The recent global developments, I think, are challenging for the world order. Powerful forces are questioning de democratic systems and the rule of law in the world today. And that is where it's crucial for countries like Australia and India to come together, because we are two vibrant democracies with shared perspectives, common interests, democratic values, and we align in our, in our energies and our strengthening in, in our relationship. Soon, of course, through this, we will be celebrating India's, India's Republic Day, a day that honours the constitution of India's vibrant democracy. But for now, in this special year of marking its 75 years of independence, celebrated as Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Indians here in Australia and all over the world on this momentous occasion and of recognising this living document of India's constitution. I think the last few years have been significant for our bilateral relationship for Australia and India. And I hope that our two democracies continue to work even closer together and engage across areas of significance to both of our countries. It can only make our region more peaceful, more stronger, and our two nations will, will only be of benefit from that, I am sure. So with that, I would like to wish uh, everyone uh, uh, an incredibly happy Constitution Day for India's living document, its constitution. And thank you to the High Commissioner and to His Excellency for inviting me to, to share this special day with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Lisa. That was, that was brilliant. Uh, and I think everybody was listening to you with uh, rapt attention. Uh, thank you for for describing to us uh, in such fine uh, in such a fine way uh, the strengths of our own constitution. Um, I'm I'm sure uh, many of us have learned a lot from that. Uh, thank you, Ruchika. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, I I take this opportunity to thank um, uh, uh, Ma'am for agreeing to be with us today. It was really a very engrossing talk, Ma'am. Uh, it was very enriching indeed to hear from you, as Sir has just mentioned, the strengths of our own constitution. And it makes us so proud to know that how our forefathers, though reflected, um, uh, took historical perspectives into mind, as you mentioned, uh, but also had a vision to foresee the challenges that we have to encounter in the future and need to be prepared. So though we are ready to deal with the challenges, we are yet determined to stick to our core values as are reflected in our constitutions, as you have correctly mentioned. I once again take the opportunity for thanking you, for thanking High Commissioner uh, for uh, organizing this, um, uh, for having the idea of having MAM on this. And uh, thank you everyone for being with us today uh, to observe the solemn occasion. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Ruchika. Can I also uh, uh, thank everybody for joining us today, and and especially uh, I see that our Consul General in Melbourne, Dr. Sushil Kumar, has also joined us. Sushil, thank you for being here, and thank you also to Deputy High Commissioner Sudeep Mehta for being with us, and thank you, Ruchika, for organizing this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. 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 Namaste.